ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಚಸ್ವೇ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಚಸ್ವೇ ಅವತಾರವರೆಷ್ಟಾ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯತೆ ನಮಃ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾಸಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾಜ್ಯೋತಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋ ಮೃತಂಗಮಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾರ್ನೇಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಅನ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಟು ದ ರಿಯಲ್ to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality today's topic the way to spiritual progress many people try to live spiritual life but it seems they won't feel any breakthrough in their spiritual progress but there are specific reasons why we are not able to make any progress in spiritual life first of all you must be very sincere about your spiritual aspiration that is very important unless you are very strong in your aspiration you will not make any progress in spiritual life so it starts from there be sure that you really want spiritual life next step is how to achieve that progress shri ramakrishna very clearly stated in the gospel acquire god's grace it is true god's grace is always there but then you have to make special effort to recognize that grace so shri ramakrishna has said grace descends upon him only after he has prayed to god with intense yearning of heart and practiced spiritual discipline how clearly sri ramakrishna has stated so do we have that intense yearning are we practicing spiritual disciplines you have to ask this question and answer yourself so if you are satisfying the answers to these questions then you are on the way to spiritual progress the mother feels compassion for her child when she sees him running about breathlessly she has been hiding herself now she appears before the child so that is how shri ramakrishna explains the earning of the spiritual seeker then a question may be asked why should god make us run about shri ramakrishna immediately answered this question it is god's will that we should run about a little it should not be like a cakewalk 
then it's a great fun god has created the world in play as it were this is called mahamaya the great illusion we are all under the spell of this illusion as long as we are under this spell we are in deep ignorance about our true nature about our sublime glory so shri ramkrishna suggests that one must take refuge in the divine mother the cosmic power itself it is she who has bound us with the shackles of illusion the realization of god is possible only when those shackles are severed shri ramakrishna continued and said therefore one must propitiate the divine mother the primal energy why should we have to propitiate divine mother in order to obtain god's grace this is shri ramakrishna's words we are all in prakriti never forget that as long as you are in prakriti in the realm of prakriti you are under the jurisdiction of the adi shakti para shakti maha shakti divine mother so you have to propitiate the divine mother not to get over from this worldly entanglements in order to realize god so one must propitiate the divine mother the primal energy in order to obtain god's grace god himself is maha maya who deludes the world with her illusion and conjures up the magic of creation preservation and destruction she has spread this veil of ignorance before our eyes we can go into the inner chamber only when she lets us pass through the door living outside we see only outer objects but not that eternal being existence knowledge bliss absolute therefore it is stated in the scriptures that deity is like brahma the creator praised mahamaya for the destruction of the demons madhu and kaitava shakti alone is the root of the universe that primal energy has two aspects one is vidya and the other avidya avidya deludes avidya conjures up lust and gold which cast the spell vidya on the other hand begets devotion kindness wisdom and love which lead one which lead one to god this therefore avidya must be propitiated and that is the purpose of the rites of shakti worship the devotee assumes various attitudes towards shakti in order to propitiate her the attitude of a handmaid a hero or a child so shri ramakrishna's instruction to make progress in spiritual life is to acquire god's grace by propitiating avidya shakti by propitiating the divine mother that's the first suggestion given by shri ramakrishna the second one 
which is also equally relevant to make real progress in spirituality is Sri Ramakrishna says pray to God incessantly pray to God incessantly at desk Sri Ramakrishna says in the gospel at desk put aside all duties put aside and pray to God very clear if you are not able to do that then don't complain that you are not making progress sure you won't make any progress unless you do it properly you can't expect the progress so Sri Ramakrishna says that at dusk put aside all duties and pray to God are we doing how many people here do attend our Aarati in the evening, 6 o'clock? Just at the time of Aarati, they run away. I have seen people chatting, discussing, talking. But when they see the time, if it is about the Aarati would begin, immediately they go away. Because if they have to be in the Aarati, they have to stay there another half an hour more. That half an hour is equal to one hour for them. Oh, half an hour is too long time. Suppose if they were talking, the half an hour is nothing. <laughs> I am just telling you how the mind deceives. How the mind deceives. How we have no priority at all. Our priority is only towards worldly things. You have to attend some social party to attend some club or meet some friends all sorts of things for all those things you have got you find time but when it comes to spirituality you calculate well it's not possible like that they say well Sri Ramakrishna's instructions are here it's like a mirror you don't have to Go anywhere for any counsel. Best counsel you are getting in Sri Ramakrishna. If you read Gospel, which class I am taking every Tuesday, you get tremendous instructions. Tremendous. As I said, the outset, the very important quality that is required for making any spiritual progress is sincerity. If you are sincere, then you really pay all attentions to what Sri Ramakrishna has said. That will become your first priority in your daily life. Other things should come secondary. First priority should be towards spiritual ideas. So, Sri Ramakrishna is telling telling positively without any trace of doubt one attains God these are the words of Sri Ramakrishna page 588 if you want to see one attains God how? through Japa people keep on asking Swami if I do is it mechanical why do you worry about mechanical this or that that means you have no faith in the mantra when the mantra is given to you by the Guru, it is charged with spiritual power. The mantra is everything for you. It guides you. It purifies you. It takes you towards God. And it gives you immense peace and joy. You have to nourish it. Cherish and nourish. Then you will enjoy the beauty of Japa. Why do you think it is mechanical? The seed is to be watered. You know, when you sow the seed in the field, if you don't water the seed, you won't get any sprout of the plant. So, pouring water periodically is very essential to expect any sprout of the plant. Otherwise, the seed remains a seed. It doesn't sprout. Same way, 
Japa means pouring the water into the seed. Constantly repeating the mantra. Whatever mantra you have received from the Guru, just keep on chanting, repeating, at the same time have tremendous faith that that is God Himself. That mantra itself is your God. You will have that revelation when your mind is thoroughly purified. So purification is very important to achieve spiritual progress. So, Sri Ramakrishna says, why should you repeat God's name? Because by repeating the name of God secretly in a secluded place or in the corner of your room or in the shrine, you receive divine grace. In the first, I told, acquire God's grace. One is constantly praying, another is propitiating the Divine Mother, and thirdly, constantly repeating the Divine Name. These are the ways to acquire God's grace. Once you get the grace, then vision is imminent. Any moment you may get the vision. Vision is always followed by God's grace. Suppose there is a big piece of timber lying under water and fastened to the land with a chain. By proceeding along the chain, link by link, will at last touch the timber. So, the importance of Japa. By constantly thinking of God, you reach God. It is a pathway to God. Pathway. The moments when you are not chanting or repeating God's name, those moments you are going astray. You are going along a sidewalk. To that extent you are obstructing your own spiritual progress. Repetition of God's name means you are walking along the spiritual path. And another important quality Sri Ramakrishna mentions. I am taking all these things from the Gospel. Gospel, I consider it as one of the Vedas in modern times. All people cannot have access to Vedas because to know Vedas you must know Sanskrit. Not only that, you must have the knowledge of the Sanskrit grammar. Not only that, you must have efficient teacher to teach. All those things are there. But then, here is Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, which is Veda itself in modern times, available to us in all languages. Simpler than the simplest, most sublime. So he says, Sri Ramakrishna says, one should be guileless. Unless a man is guileless, he does not receive the grace of God. See, how everything is crystal clear. Sri Ramakrishna doesn't say, you must read the uh, six systems of philosophy to realize God. No. He just said, be guileless. You will get once, once you get the grace of God, even God as Saraswati will reside in your tongue. So, Sri Ramakrishna tells, dive deep. Don't simply wabble on the surface. Learn to love God. Learn to love God. So, Sri Ramakrishna is telling us, plunge into divine love. He who seeks God with a longing heart can see Him, can talk to Him. As I am talking to you, 
believe my words when i say that god can be seen sri ramakrishna's words because he himself had seen god so there should not be any iota of doubt can one find god in the sacred books by reading the scriptures one may feel at the most that god exists but god does not reveal himself to a man unless he himself dives deep only after such a plunge after the revelation of god through his grace is once doubt destroyed you may read scriptures by the thousands and recite thousands of texts but unless you plunge into god with yearning of heart you will not comprehend him by mere scholarship you may fool man but not god scriptures and book what can one achieve with these alone nothing can be realized without god's grace strive with a longing heart for his grace through his grace you will see him and he will talk to you sir when devotee asked shri ramakrishna sir does god show more grace to one than to another if so he can be accused of the fault of partiality the man who asked this question was a sub judge shri ramakrishna answered what are you saying do you mean to say that the moon and glow worm are the same though both give light ishwar chandra vidyasagar very reputed person of that time asked shri ramakrishna the same question shri ramakrishna answered is it a fact sir that ishwar chandra vidyasagar asked shri ramakrishna is it a fact sir that god gives more power to one and less to another the question which was asked by sub judge the same question was asked by ish chandra vidyasagar and shri ramakrishna is referring to that and shri ramakrishna answers it god i said shri ramakrishna said exists in every being as a all pervading spirit he is in the ant as well as in me but there are different manifestations of his power in different things if all are the same then why have we come here to see you attracted by your renown that is answering to ishtar and vidyasagar shiram to himself went to see him because of his great qualities have you grown a pair of horns no it is not that you have compassion you have scholarship there is a greater degree of these virtues in you than in others that's the reason you are so well known don't you see that there are men who single handed can defeat a hundred persons again one man takes to his heels in fear of another you see such a person too if there are not different manifestations of power in different beings then why did people respect keshav chandra sen so much keshav chandra sen was also very reputed person at that time so god's glory manifests in different degrees that you should understand there's no question of partiality with respect to god so everyone's mind has got layers and layers of impurities a person who has maximum layers of impurities cannot reflect the glory of god at all he will be just like a brutal person merciless cruel veritable demon but a person in whose in whose mind is purified enough all the layers of impurities are chopped off or removed there you see the glory of god shining in all glory one day 
A disciple said to Holy Mother in a mood of great dejection, O oh Mother, I have practiced so much austerity and uh, japa, but I have not achieved anything. Holy Mother answered him, Look, God is not fish or vegetable that you can buy him for a price. This is very important to remember that a person who has really spiritually progressed never thinks he has done enough to deserve God's vision. Now another important step we have to underscore in order to make way in our spiritual progress is renunciation of ego, renunciation of ego. The whole world is just boiling because of this clash of ego. People are swayed by the influence of ego. Small, small things, they get hurt. Even the so-called spiritual people, even the so-called devotees, they have this hurt feeling. If you have hurt feeling, you are disqualified as a spiritual person. Please note that. And situations come to feel that you are hurt, but there is a test for you. There is a test. Do you fall a victim to the hurt or do you overcome it? If you don't have hurt feeling, even in that situation, you are hero, you have succeeded in spiritual path. So, that means a spiritual person is fully awakened all the time about the things happening around him and he is aware of his responsibilities and duties, how he should maintain his tranquility of the mind. It's important. Why should you have any hurt feeling at all, even if there is a cause for hurts? Just ignore it. Even though it may not be possible immediately, but still have that ideal. No, I should not get hurt. If you constantly dwell upon strongly, then you won't feel hurt. And God has given everyone the quality of forgetfulness. Forget the situation where you are being hurt. Well, Sri Ramakrishna was talking to captain and the devotees. When Jai Gopal Sain and Trilokya of the Brahma Samaj arrived, they saluted the master and sat down. Sri Ramakrishna looked at Trilokya with a smile and said, Sri Ramakrishna is telling, It is an account of the ego that one is not able to see God. In front of the door of God's mansion lies the stump of ego. One cannot enter the mansion without jumping over the stump. Sri Ramakrishna gives a nice story. Beautiful. There was once a man who had acquired the power to tame ghosts. One day, at his summons, a ghost appeared. Immediately the ghost, ans- uh, immediately the ghost said, Sir, Tell me what you want me to do. The moment you cannot give me any work, I should break your neck. That is the language of the ghost. (laughs) The man had many things to accomplish. So, he got them done everything by the ghost, one by one. But how long he can give work like that? At last he could find nothing more for the ghost to do. Then the ghost is demanding and he said, Look, you are not giving me any work. I am going to break your neck. Wait a minute, said the man. And he said to the ghost, Wait a minute, I shall return presently. Then this man ran to his teacher and pleaded, Reverend sir, I am in great danger. This is my trouble. And his, he told his teacher his trouble and asked, What shall I do now in order to save my life? 
Otherwise, the ghost will kill me. Then the teacher was a very wise man. He said, look, do this. Tell the ghost to straighten this kinky hair. The ghost devoted itself day and night to straightening the hair. But how could it make a kinky hair straight? The hair remained kinky. The karus, you know, so many karus. Likewise, the ego seems to vanish this moment, but it reappears the next. Unless one renounces the ego, one does not receive the grace of God. So, how important it is to get rid of this stumbling block ego. Suppose there is a feast in a house and the master of the house puts a man in charge of the stores. As long as the man remains in the storeroom, the master doesn't go there. But when of his own will, the man renounces the storeroom and goes away, then the master locks it and takes charge, takes charge of it himself. A garden is appointed only for a minor. A boy cannot safeguard his property. Therefore the king assumes responsibility for him. God does not take over our responsibilities unless we renounce our ego. All these are words of Sri Ramakrishna. Again Sri Ramakrishna tells another nice story. Once Goddess Lakshmi and Lord Narayan they were seated in Vaikuntha in their abode. Suddenly Narayan stood up. Lakshmi had been stroking his feet. She was surprised how suddenly the Lord is trying to go out. And she asked, Oh Lord, where are you going? Narayan answered, One of my devotees in great, is in great danger. One of my devotees is in great danger. I must save him. With these words he went out. But he came back immediately. Lakshmi was puzzled. She asked, Oh Lord, why have you returned so soon? Lord Narayan smiled and said, Look, the devotee was going along the road overwhelmed with love for me. Some washermen were drying clothes on the grass and the devotees and this devotee walked over the clothes <laughs> because he was thinking of me and in that mood he didn't notice the clothes are there on the ground. He just walked over them. At this the washerman chased him and were going to beat him with their sticks. So I ran out to protect him. Narayan says, But why have you come back? Lakshmi asked. So Narayana laughed and said, I saw the devotee himself picking up a brick to throw at them. So there was no need for me to go. So I came back. That's how nicely Sri Ramakrishna has said this. I said to Keshav Chandra Singh, You must renounce your ego. Keshav replied, If I do, how can I keep my organization together? Sri Ramakrishna said, I said to him, How slow you are to understand. I am not asking you to renounce the ripe ego. The ego that makes a man feel he is a servant of God or his devotee, that is ripe ego. That you don't have to renounce. Give up the unripe ego. Kacha Ami. Renounce that. The ego that creates attachment to worldly things. The ego that make you crazy about the pleasures, transitory pleasures of the world. The ego that makes you forget God and hang on to this world. That you should renounce. The ego that makes a man feel he is God's servant, his child, he is a ripe ego. It doesn't harm one. On the other hand, it takes you 
nearer to God, paves the way towards God. So, this is another important point we should observe and practice. That is, retain your ego as the servant of God or child of God, always linking yourself with God. That's the safest way of keeping your ego under control. And that is the way to acquire God's grace. Now, effort is essential. The wind of God's grace is incessantly blowing. But lazy sailors on the sea of life do not take advantage of it. But the active and the strong always keep the sails of their minds unfurled to catch the favorable wind and thus reach their destination very soon. As a general rule, one must go through a long preparation before one can attain perfection. Babu Dwarkanath Mitter, a gentleman of Calcutta, Sri Ramakrishna is referring to him. That person was not made a judge of the High Court in one day. He had to work hard and spend years of arduous toil and study before he was raised to the bench of the High Court. Those who are not willing to undergo the trouble and labor must be prepared to remain mere briefless pleaders. So you must show your merit, you must show your efficiency, then only you will be rewarded. It's just like that. You have to make your effort and God loves, oh my child is making effort, let me help. And he comes and you feel the grace of God immensely. Now, in all matters spiritual, in all the disciplines you practice, the most important thing required is perseverance. Sri Ramakrishna said to your devotee, everything depends upon the will of the Lord, perseverance is necessary for God vision. You can't be impatient. If you merely sit on the shore of a lake and say, there are fish in this lake, will you get any fish? Go and get the things necessary for fishing. Get a rod and line and bait and throw some food into the water to entice them. Then from the deep water the fish will rise and come near when you can see and hook them. You wish me to show you God? While you sit quietly by, without making the least effort, you want me to set the curd, to churn the butter and hold it to your mouth? You ask me to catch the fish and put it in your hands? How unreasonable is your demand? So Sri Ramakrishna is telling strongly that one must make sincere efforts. Doing spiritual sadhana regularly, without grumbling, without complaining, without excuses. That is the, that is called as effort. If, if for some reason you are not able to do that, you have to blame yourself. It is as simple as that. You have to blame yourself. Now, a devotee asked Holy Mother, O oh Mother, how does one get the vision of God? How Mother says, the Divine Mother herself who was born as a human being in order to show the great ideal for all the men and women, for all the householders, even for monks. Sharda Devi is a great ideal. You must know she is a consort of Sri Ramakrishna, the master of renunciation. In order to be his consort, she should be equally the master of renunciation. And she was so. It is because of Holy Mother's spirit of renunciation, Sri Ramakrishna could live that life of renunciation. Sri Ramakrishna himself has said that. So, when the person asked, 
Holy Mother, how does one get the vision of God? Mother also says the same thing. It is only through God's grace. But then one must practice meditation and japa. That removes impurities of mind. One must practice spiritual disciplines such as worship and so forth. An example is given as one gets the fragrance of a flower by handling it or as one gets the smell of sandalwood by rubbing it against a stone. In the same way, one gets spiritual awakening by constantly thinking of God. Not one in a million of sincere aspirants can become desireless with the snapping of a finger. So the aspirant needs divine grace. Unless a man becomes desireless, one cannot realize God. Desireless means the desires, you know, they bother the mind. When the desires are there, they won't allow you to think of God. Thinking of God, doing meditation, they are not to be classified as desires in the ordinary sense. In order to have the vision of God, to realize God, that is not considered as a desire. Desire in the ordinary sense means the, the, the thing that takes you, your mind away from God. That, that is called as desire. Desire to have God is really wonderful. Just like uh, Vidya Maya and Avidya Maya. Avidya Maya binds you, Vidya Maya releases you. In the same way, one desire binds you, another desire releases you. Worldly desires bind you to suffering. The desires of spiritual life releases you from suffering. So, the aspirant needs divine grace. The greater the perfection to which a soul aspires, says Brother Lawrence, the more dependent it is upon divine grace. Again, divine grace cannot be had like a thing from the market for a price. That's true. But the Holy Mother taught certain ways of attracting divine grace which are within the capacity of any sincere aspirant. Mother says, God is one's very own. It is the eternal relationship. He is everyone's own. One realizes him in proportion to the intensity of one's feeling for him. Again, as she laid the greatest stress on the repetition of the Lord's name, she emphasized that Repeating the name of God once when the mind is controlled is equivalent to a million repetitions when the mind is away from God. That means when you are repeating God's name, be conscious you are repeating God's name. The repetition must be accompanied by concentration. Then alone one gets the grace of God. So concentration must be there when you do spiritual sadhana. Holy Mother further taught one should pray for the grace of God. Sri Ramakrishna also said that. All spiritual progress must be through renunciation. Spiritual progress, what is the meaning of renunciation? Don't get frightened. Should we have to become nuns and monks? Not that way. Renunciation means freeing the mind from all desires, filling up the mind with spiritual ideas, the grace of either of one's own mind or of God is all important for spiritual progress. And there is one sure sign of received grace. It manifests itself in the aspirant's life as the spirit of renunciation. All progress in spiritual life has to pass through the portal of renunciation. There is no way of bypassing that portal by any kind of trick or gimmick. Attachments to the things of the world and slavery to the senses in a gross or subtle way are obstacles in the way of spiritual progress. We have not to renounce anything if we don't want to. 
we are free to possess and enjoy whatever we can get at or acquire and then take what goes along with that but whether we like it or not if we intend to move god word our progress will have to be through the portals of renunciation as swami vivekananda teaches a comfortable religion cannot take us far into the spiritual life comfortable religion he said when a man asks for a comfortable religion you may know that he has become so degenerate that he cannot think of anything higher than what he is now is just his little present surroundings and nothing more in all the four yogas taught in hinduism as paths leading to the attainment of spiritual illumination renunciation though taking different forms in each case is nonetheless the hallmark of spiritual progress swami vivekananda teaches this in all clarity in in his bhakti yoga bearing in mind the supreme importance of this theme swami ji said the greatest purifier among all such things a purifier without which no one can enter the regions of this higher devotion para bhakti and that is renunciation this frightens many yet without it there cannot be any spiritual growth in all our yogas this renunciation is necessary this is the stepping stone and the real center and the real heart of all spiritual culture renunciation this is religion renunciation when the human soul draws back from the things of the world and tries to go into deeper things when man the spirit which has here somehow become concretized and materialized understands that he is thereby going to be destroyed and to be reduced almost into mere matter and turns his face away from matter then begins renunciation then begins real spiritual growth the karma yogi's renunciation is in the shape of giving up all the fruits of his action he is not attached to the results of his labor he does not care for any reward here or hereafter he does things just for the sake of doing for the love of god he does many devotees come and work for the ashrama but they feel great love and joy in doing that that is the spirit of renunciation they spare their time they did not go somewhere else but they engage themselves in doing selfless activities in the ashram so that way they are culturing the spirit of renunciation the rajyogi knows that the whole of nature is intended for the soul to acquire experience and the result of all the experience of the soul is for it to become aware of its eternal separateness from nature the human soul has to understand and realize that it has been spirit and not matter through eternity and that this conjunction of it with matter is and can be only for a time the rajyogi learns the lesson of renunciation through his own experience of nature then comes gyana yogi he has the harshest of all renunciations to go through as he has to realize from the very first that the whole of this solid looking nature is all an illusion he has to understand that all that is any kind of manifestation of power in nature belongs to the soul and not to nature he has to know from the very start that all knowledge and all experience are in the soul and not in nature so he has at once and by the sheer force of rational conviction to tear himself away from all bondage to nature he lets nature and all that belongs to her go he lets them vanish and tries to stand alone of all renunciations the most natural so to say is that of the bhakti bhakta yogi bhakti yogi here there is no violence nothing to give up nothing to tear off as it were from ourselves 
nothing from which we have violently to separate ourselves. The bhakta's renunciation is easy, smooth flowing and as natural as the things around us. When the moon shines brightly, all the stars become dim and when the sun shines, the moon herself becomes dim. The renunciation necessary for the attainment of bhakti is not obtained by killing anything but just comes in as naturally as in the presence of an increasingly stronger light, the less intense ones become dimmer and dimmer until they vanish away completely. So this love of the pleasures of the senses and of the intellect is all made dim and thrown aside and cast into the shade by the love of God himself. That love of God grows and assumes a form which is called parabhakti or supreme devotion. Forms vanish Rituals fly away, books are superseded, images, temples, churches, religions and sects, countries and nationalities, all these little limitations and bondages fall off by their own nature from him who knows this love of God. Nothing remains to bind him or fetter his freedom. A ship all on a sudden, Sri Ramakrishna says this, comes near a magnetic rock, and its iron bolts and bars are all attracted and drawn out and the planks get loosened and freely float on the water. Divine grace thus loosens the binding bolts and bars of the soul and it becomes free. So in this renunciation auxiliary to devotion there is no harshness, no dryness, no struggle, no repression, no suppression. The Bhakta has not to suppress any single one of his emotions. He only strives to intensify them and direct them to God. All these are told by Swami Vivekananda in Complete Works, Volume Number 3. Any spiritual progress has to have its psychological roots in actualized renunciation. In this context, however, the question of the householder's position in the world is Swadharma versus renunciation does arise and needs to be clarified. In many passages from the Gospel, Sri Ramakrishna has answered this question from a variety of viewpoints. In fine, according to his teaching, the householder's renunciation will be internal and that of the monk both internal and external. In his own words, Sri Ramakrishna says, I ask people, householders, to renounce mentally. I do not ask them to give up the world. If one lives in the world unattached and seeks God with sincerity, then one is able to attain Him. The point to be understood is that one must carry into practice what Sri Ramakrishna prescribes here. Living in the world unattached and seeking God sincerely. The rest then follows. In this Connection, it is important to mention that genuine and mature renunciation always flows as a stream of love to fellow beings, finding expression in acts of truly selfless service on physical, mental or spiritual planes. A person may profess no religion, wear none of its external marks, he may frequent no house of worship, go to no place of pilgrimage, study no scripture, but... but if he selflessly serves fellow beings, looking on them as his own self, living out there in other bodies, he has indeed progressed spiritually. Of this there can be no doubt. Lord Krishna teaches in the Gita, Atpavamamyena saurvatra samam pasyati yorjuna sukam va idiva dukkam sayogi paramo mataha Him I hold to be the supreme yogi. Arjun, who looks on the pleasure and pain of all beings as he looks on them in himself. Egotistic renunciation, which moves in the closed circuit of sanctimonious selfishness, is not renunciation yet. Not until it reaches out and touches the self that pervades the universe and travels beyond it. And another important uh, step in the way of spiritual progress, Sri Ramakrishna has given to us in the gospel, that is, 
one must have zealousness, zealousness in spiritual life. Be zealous. Sri Ramakrishna said to the devotee, as a tiger devours other animals, so does the tiger of zeal for the Lord eat up lust, anger and the other passions. Once the zeal grows in the heart, lust and the other passions disappear. The gopis of Vrindavan had that state of mind because of their zeal for Krishna. So, let us try to remember all these points which I just mentioned and then we are sure to make progress in our spiritual life. Thank you. Om Sahana Vavato Sahana Bhunakto Sahaviryam Karavavadai Tejasvinavadhe Tamastuma Vidvishavadhi Om Shantishantishantihi Harihi Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu May the Lord protect us, may He guide us, may our knowledge be fruitful and enlightened, may we not hate each other, peace, peace, peace be unto all.